What's up everyone, it's Oliver. Today I'm talking about some weird and cool engineering jobs that you probably had no idea even existed. When you think of engineering, you probably picture a software engineer writing code, a mechanical engineer making a car, or a civil engineer making a building. Have you ever wondered what it might be like to be a systems engineer for a grow up, or a chocolate engineer, or an engineer designing traffic lights? I'm gonna guess that you haven't, so if you wanna learn a new thing or two today, watch the rest of this video. Before I get started with the video, I'm being told that you need to go and engineer the like button and manufacture the subscribe button so that you can see a new video from me every single week. I like to talk about engineering, I do some day in the life videos, and occasionally I talk about finance or productivity. So join the club. Thanks so much for doing that, now let's get into the video. So let's say for example that you want to work in a company with a recently legalized substance in Canada or the United States. Let's also say that you learned some stuff in your engineering degree about control systems engineering. Well then, why not work as a systems design engineer for a grow up? You can put two of your passions in one place and I'm sure that the person hiring you would love to have you on the team. So what exactly would this job entail? Well, obviously you would be tasked with creating the automated control systems that would enable these plants to grow and thrive. There are actually a lot of different factors that you have to consider if you want to be an engineer at this job. Some of these include where to grow the plant, what light to use, irrigation and water systems, humidity and temperature controls, and so much more. Coming up with a system that integrates all of these components can be a somewhat complex task because you have to figure out which tubes to use, which sprinklers to use, which water systems to use, which temperature sensors to use. At an even more advanced level, you can put sensors in the soil and then try to measure the nutrients, get feedback, collect it into the controller that you coded, and then the controller can decide whether or not to give more nutrients, water, or sunlight to the plants. So however weird this job might be, it can actually get quite complex to the point of needing an engineer. So where do you go if you wanna get this job? Well, you probably won't find it on the companies who grow these things website, but you might find it in a systems design engineering company website and they might be able to hire you. There are tons of companies out there who design control systems for all different kinds of agriculture. So you just have to hope that one day your two hobbies collide and you can be a grow up engineer. Can't believe I said that. <laughs> And your last question, what type of education do you need? Well, anything relating to electrical, software, or mechanical engineering that has some type of control systems in it will do very well. And now, moving away from agriculture, second, we have a chocolate engineer. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, this one is a little bit of a stretch. But when I was researching for this video, it seemed that literally every single blog post online could not resist putting down chocolate engineer as a real job. But I'm here to tell you that a chocolate engineer is probably just a very fancy way of saying chef. Now I am aware that there are scientists who work in labs and try to change the chemical makeup of ingredients in order to make a food taste a different way. As a matter of fact, I know that a lot of fast food companies hire these types of engineers in order to make their food more addictive so they can sell more. But I'm just gonna guess that a lot of the time when somebody is going around saying they are a chocolate engineer that they are probably not doing the things that you would do in a lab. Now I'm not saying these people don't exist, I'm just saying it's more likely that they're just messing around with ingredients, changing the proportions to find something that tastes good. And I can completely respect that because I like some chocolate. All I'm trying to say here is that you probably don't need a chemical engineering degree to be a chocolate engineer. All you need is some creativity to make it look nice and some business skills to sell it to people. Another weird thing that I was able to discover from my research was a traffic signal engineer. As you might have guessed, this person works with municipalities to manage traffic. Now this usually isn't the only component of their job. They usually also work in some type of infrastructure or multiple different traffic control systems or they might even design some of the new roadways. But I'll be honest with you, this is one of those things that you don't really think about, and then when someone tells you it, you're like, oh yeah, I guess somebody does have to do that. So naturally, the person in this job would probably be a civil engineer or somebody who knows a bit more about electronics, like an electrical engineer. This being said, I actually have a big problem with the way that suburbs and traffic systems are designed in North America. I found this channel on YouTube called Not Just Bikes. I highly recommend checking them out. It's a guy from the Netherlands who used to live in Canada and he compares and contrasts the different ways that traffic systems work in the Netherlands and the way that they work in North America. I realized from watching these videos that we could be doing such a better job with our traffic systems that it's honestly kind of shameful. 
One of my biggest pet peeves that I'm sure a lot of people agree with me on is waiting at a traffic light for three whole minutes when nobody is going back and forth perpendicular to you. We really need to jump into the 21st century here and use real-time traffic control systems that can actually adapt to what's happening in the current moment. There's also been a huge crusade around my neighborhood to try and stop people from speeding so much, but if we just designed our roadways properly and we separated pedestrians from bicyclists from cars, we wouldn't be having these kinds of problems and we wouldn't have to force people to slow down using a bunch of traffic signs and traffic cameras. I really don't think that's the solution to our problems. Kind of unrelated to the video, but I just thought, hey, if you're interested, why not? And go check out Not Just Bikes, he's a pretty cool channel. What are some other honorable mentions that I also found kind of interesting? So first up, we have weird types of design engineering. There are tons of different kinds of design engineering out there, but I think the most interesting ones are when you get to design weird products. There are tons of things out there that might be classified as weird to you if you're not familiar with them. But most, if not anything that you see on the shelf has to have some kind of design engineering done for it, even the stuff that you would find at a place like a love shop. Second, another cool one that I didn't mention is sports engineering. If you wanna get a job in this field, you usually have to be quite interested in the sport that you're working on, but it's a very cool job because you get to design equipment and work with all of the new technologies that are constantly developing in various different sports. This sport can be quite competitive and it's essentially just another form of design engineering, but if you really want the job, it's definitely possible to get one. Third, we have a pyrotechnic engineer. When I think of this, I like to think of explosions, but they also do fun stuff like create fireworks, and you can actually get paid a real salary for doing this. Most of the time, the people who are pyrotechnic engineers come from some form of chemical engineering, and now I'm really regretting not going into chemical engineering because I want to blow things up. This is like such a guy thing to want to go and blow things up. And another one that's not really weird, but I thought was kind of interesting is cryptocurrency engineering. Crypto has been booming like crazy, and it's honestly probably good to learn a thing or two about crypto engineering. And last but not least, another kind of unconventional method is you could go to law school after getting your engineering degree and then become a patent law engineer, which would be pretty cool. You can get people in trouble for infringing on patents and make the big bucks. At the end of the day, after making this video, I think it made me realize that there are so many interesting and cool ways of looking at engineering that I hadn't really thought of before. There are so many different ways to make engineering fun and interesting to you, you just have to go out and find them. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel, I make a new video every single week, so be sure to check it out and I'll see you in the next one.